guys today we're going to be installing a CarPlay integrated module for an SL, but it pretty much applies to most new Mercedes, isn't that right, Aiden? Hell yeah. Alright, he's got that trim panel right there, went over there, you basically just pry it off with some pry tools. As you can see, it goes all the way to the rear of the car. We should put the top down actually, shouldn't we? We got much better, so now we can just kind of pry this off all this the way. One, this one just pops now. Yeah? That's what my side did at least. No, so then there should be like three or four T20 screws on that side over there, and as well okay. as this side to take off that wood trim, but let's get this panel off. All right, now we got to remove the three T20 screws on either side. You can, you can see there's one up there, one there, one there. There's also a T20 holding this bracket right over here, which has to come off that kind of holds this kind of piece in place. So there are, I guess, four on each side in total. All right, so we got the Mercedes three spot. Out. Oh, of course, yeah. Got these three, and then also the bracket one over here. This thing just kind of pops off from that area. It's pretty easy. So right now we're just trying to pry off the wood trim around it. We took all the screws out. Um, just yeah, don't, don't, don't snap it, screws. but... Oh. You didn't hit the bracket out. <laughs> oh, good job, good job. There you go. Okay, careful. Bad. Got to unplug stuff. So we got the wood trim out, and now we got to take out the two T20s at the very bottom of the unit. It's kind of smart how they did it. So you can pull it, basically you unscrew them. Uh -huh. And if you press on them, it kind of pops the entire unit out. So we're going to do that now. Bad. You can see there's one there, and one there. All right, so once those two uh, screws are out, there's a dog over there. Look at that, Desi. Anyways, once you get those two screws out, the entire thing just kind of pops out. Now, you really want to be careful right here because it's pretty heavy and you don't want to scratch anything down here. So if you want, cover it up with microfiber towels and all that good stuff. Um, also, there are some very delicate cables on the other side of it, so you don't want to pull too hard. All right, so you're just heading it out. Um, as you can see, it's kind of funnily made by Mitsubishi, but... <laughs> Um, we gotta undo some connections back here, which are kind of hard to see. Also, don't want to damage any like fiber optic stuff, so be very gentle with this. So one thing to note is that these two connectors right here don't actually transfer over through this harness, so we gotta replug them in right over here. Uh, be very careful with these. Um, they might be fiber optics. I'm not quite sure. Either way, you don't want to be too, you know, um, harsh with them. So we gotta oh. use a pick tool or some that sort of flathead. Yeah, that should work. And then press down that tab, pull them out, and then just put them in there. The new one. This time? Uh, yeah. It actually has to be disconnected from the other harness just to fully get those wires out. So if you see this little arrow right there, yeah. Yeah, a little one. So we have to we have to pull it up a little bit to release them. So now All we right. can put these into whoa, 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 whoa. the new connector, which is right there on the outside. All right, so we got these guys plugged back in. So now with our new harness for the command system, we got this connection over here and an aux cable. I'm not quite sure if we need this yet, but we definitely will need this to attach another part of the harness. Mm. There's an aux cable. Maybe it's for the audio. We'll see. Yeah, probably. Um, but this guy over here, longer harness, is going to connect to that gray part right there. So we also connected this cable down here, which was for the USB if you want to do wired CarPlay, which is Aiden sitting on right now. So it's going to be nice and uh, gross when we take it out later. Mm -hmm. um, and the box just fell down there, which is great. Mm -hmm. But uh, now we're taking the um, start button out of the trim so we can kind of try it out for ourselves and see if it actually works. Um, I believe it to hold down the cancel button, right? Something like that. Yeah. To activate stupid. it. Um, hold down back. Yeah. He's struggling with the tabs, but we're going to figure uh, it out. Alright, so we were wrong about a few connections, I'll describe that in a second, but as you can see it's working pretty well right now. Uh, we just have to connect the aux cable from this guy to the new harness over here, and then we'll have the audio set to aux and it should be working just fine, but look at that, this is pretty cool. So, totally, you know, stock screen, all that. Um, great alternative if you don't want to get the full-on Android screen um, as a propeller plane flies over us. Um, but uh, yeah, this looks really good. It works pretty well, right? Yeah, dude, that yeah. was fast. Oh, wait. All right, so we have to change some wiring up um, because we didn't do the correct way. So here, his going to explain ah. it. So before we were trying to wire our LCD in, we didn't really know where to put it because it just said to put it into the back of our head unit here. And we had it wired into where the LCD in went before. We were going to unplug their LCD in and plug ours into it. And we realized that was ended up being stupid because then there's no input. So nothing showed up on the screen. Right. So we had to plug our LCD in to where we took out our LCD out and plugged into it. So we undid our, basically we made a big loop. We made a big loop that, I mean, makes sense. You got your out coming in that goes to our out, plugs into here, then there's an in that comes back and goes to where the other one was. So 
So after we did all that, um, basically when you have the car just on in normal command mode or whatever, you just hold down the back button, and then, in fact, we can show you. Um, so say we're on, I don't know, um, audio or whatever, Ooh. nav, whoops. If you just hold on the back button, it kind of pops up this menu, which is what we got over here. So you want to make sure that the car audio is in the aux mode before you go to the setting. Um, if you plug in your phone with uh, you know, the USB cable, you can use CarPlay that way, or you can use it wirelessly, which is great. Also, it's Android Auto, as you can see right there. I'm assuming it works the exact same way. Um, there are some settings here. You don't need to look through those at all. It's not really necessary. Um, if you actually hold down the CLR button and you have CarPlay okay. activated, Siri will actually come up, which is pretty cool. Um, one thing we did have to figure out was the harness that came with this had a little uh, you know, aux connector on the new harness over here. But we realized that that aux did absolutely nothing with the car itself. There was no connection, so it wouldn't really work. So what we did is we, in my C-Class, I actually have this little connector over here that goes from the media interface um, to, in fact, it's right here, media interface connection to aux. And uh, this car didn't have it, so we had to, we had to put this in here. And uh, essentially, this guy will connect to the media interface as an aux. The car recognized it as an aux. Then we ran the cable from our little CarPlay box through the center console, actually, kind of just kind of sandwiched it in there, and it fit just fine. And we plug that into... Um, our aux input over there. Um, so now when the car is on aux, um, everything works just fine, um, as you expect it to. Yeah, so one thing we also had to figure out was the microphone because that box cannot use the stock command microphone. We came with this little, you know, aux input, which not the prettiest thing in the world, but we kind of found a way to where it still sounds good if we kind of smush it in right over here behind the trim. So with the microphone kind of piece popping out, we'll put the trim just above it and it'll look just fine. Um, we tested the color quality, sounds good. Uh, we'll show you guys what CarPlay looks like after we have it all installed. It was working just fine. We just need to kind of tidy this up a little bit and uh, get everything back in order. Um, it will be a little bit of a challenge to, you know, obviously preserve these fiber optic lines and not damage them, um, as well as kind of get that Joy Auto box to sit below um, this command unit somehow. So it'll take some finessing. It'll probably a little bit of little time, um, but uh, we just need to you know, take some time and do it properly. All right, also what we're doing is we're sticking out the uh, USB cable for optional wired CarPlay or Android Auto at the side. Um, it's going to stick out behind that trim panel so we can kind of tuck it in and pull it out whenever we need to. Um, but uh, it'll probably be used mostly as wireless CarPlay, which is kind of why we bought this in the first place. Um, but yeah, now we're tucking in that Joy Auto box below there. Like I said, it's going to kind of be a tight squeeze in there. It's always annoying to put these units back in. A little messy, but um, we'll figure it out. All right, so we finally got this unit back in place. We actually decided to move the CarPlay box down below the glove box. There just wasn't enough space to kind of hide it behind here. So thankfully the wires could kind of go through there and took a little extra time, but it's all good now. As you can see, you got all the wires kind of flowing freely. This was in place without any kind of hassle whatsoever. Um, so we can start putting the entire car back together. Um, it all works in this position, which is not going to change. Um, Damn, look at just going to get the microphone in place, which there's plenty yeah, of slack for that. Can you do that? Um, yeah, and the wood trim and all, we should be good. We'll be back momentarily. A few moments later. All right, so we just finished up the car plan install. Got the interior all back together. And uh, it works pretty damn well. Why don't you show them, Aiden? So, turn the car on as if nothing ever would be any different. Got a cable down there, but that doesn't need to be shown at all. So yeah, normal command, you hold the back button down. You make sure it's on aux first. And then it shows the menu for the CarPlay itself, either Android Auto or CarPlay. You can either plug it in or if your phone's already connected, it'll connect it up by itself on Wi-Fi. Pretty cool, so we got full-on CarPlay as you'd expect. A little small of a screen, no touchscreen, but it's kind of a nice option if you don't want to change the screen altogether. This looks OEM, which is perfect.